good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always, told out of voice of radio, so today we need to talk about the rotation. Because you see, I told you a few weeks ago what the rotation was going to be, and I was very bullish about that because we kind of knew what it was going to be. And then a couple of weeks ago, I told you that the Japanese rotation had been announced and that it had been announced to be going into effect on the day that Scarlet and Violet 5, that is Wild Force and Cyber Judge, become legal. And I told you that that had basically confirmed that our rotation would be the day that our Scarlet and Violet becomes legal. And then yesterday we had Temporal Forces, which is our Scarlet and Violet 5. That was revealed with a release date of the 22nd of March. And I told you that the rotation would be the 5th of April, which was the first day of the European International Championships. And I told you I didn't have enough time to explain it fully then, but I would come back with a video later showing you my work and showing you why I was right. Well, it turns out Pokemon did not give me a chance to make that video because before I'd even uploaded my Temporal Forces video, and I'm sure some of you picked up on this in the comment section, before I'd even uploaded the Temporal Forces video, Pokemon had gone and officially confirmed that the rotation would be coming into effect on the 5th of April. And it's another one of those where, on the one hand, I absolutely nailed it, and I nailed it weeks ago, incidentally, it wasn't that hard a prediction to make because all the signs were there. Like, we knew we were going to be rotating to regulation mark F onwards because we'd basically been told that. But we also know at this stage Pokemon want to sync us up with Japan. That is a thing. So we knew that we were going to be rotating on the day that Japan rotated, but not the actual day they rotated the day in terms of the schedule of the Pokemon TCG. So Japan goes and rotates on the 26th of January. We don't rotate on the 26th of January because we don't get the sets at the same time as Japan. When we rotate on the 26th of January, what we really mean is we rotate on the equivalent of the 26th of January. 26th of January is a day that Scarlet and Violet 5 is legal in Japan. Our equivalent of that is the day that Temporal Forces is legal, which is the 5th of April. Now, before we get into too much else, I do need to say that for the second year in a row, the European International Championships is definitely the best one of the year. Now, I've never been to North American Internationals. I hope one day I get a chance to go. That would be amazing. And NAIC is going to have a bigger... It's going to have a bigger attendance, all right? And it's going to be an amazing tournament. No issues there. And if there's any way I can get myself there, you better believe I will be getting myself there. What I mean is, we have got a new set, Temporal Forces, and a rotation both coming in on the day the EUIC starts. That is the biggest change of the year, new set plus rotation, and it comes in the day the EUIC starts. And look, we all know this is happening, so we can all prepare for this in advance, but nobody really knows. Everybody can make guesses, and I'll be telling you some of the impacts of the rotation in this video, as I've done in the previous videos, but nobody actually knows what's going to happen and there are going to be some people that can predict better than others and they're going to do better at EUIC than the people who are less good at predicting but the fact of the matter is this is a gigantic change and there's no little tournaments to help us build up here and don't get me wrong some stores will do you know winner box tournaments in preparation for the EUIC format that is not the same as a big tournament to help us prepare. It is going to be the newest of new formats at EUIC. But as someone who loves observing the game, oh my word, EUIC is going to be so much fun because there is such a huge change coming in. And maybe NAIC happens with a new set, but it's not going to be happening with a new set and rotation. So it's just not going to be quite as much fun, although it will still be amazing. Here's what Pokemon said over on the website, and this is actually different and important. 
The standard format rotation for 2024 competitive play will go into effect on April the 5th, 2024. During every championship series season, Pokemon Organized Play removes older expansions from competition in the standard format with the goal of maintaining a healthy competitive environment. This rotation challenges existing players to create new strategies and enables new players to get involved in play Pokemon events using the most recent releases. Pokemon TCG Live also follows this rotation so players can experience a consistent rule set no matter where they compete. And I will say rotation, I know not everybody loves it and I understand that, but it is really good for shaking up the format. See my how excited I am about EUIC a minute ago. But also... It is really good for newer players to be able to kind of come in and not have to worry too much about finding a card from 10 years ago. That's kind of nice. Uh, the expanded format, incidentally, is staying as black and white on. I don't know what's going on with the expanded format, but when was the last time we had any tournaments in the expanded format? Like, it's sticking as black and white on, but as a side note here... I do get the feeling that we're sticking as black and white on for the expanded format because nobody really cares. So what's the point? Like, no one's playing it, so why spend any time trying to fix it or figure out what it should be? Could be wrong about that, but I am kind of thinking that, okay, fine, it's not being touched, but it's not being touched because it's dead. Too harsh? I don't know. The standard format for 2024. Cards with the E regulation mark will no longer be legal. Called it. Cards with F, G, and H regulation marks will be legal. A card's legality status is no longer based on which expansion it's from. Even if a card is from a recently released expansion, players will need to refer to the regulation mark on the bottom of the card to see whether that card is legal for play. So take something like Crown Zenith as an example. Crown Zenith is a set which is not rotating out per se. So if we take a new card from Crown Zenith, say something like Regigigas V-Star, which has weirdly started doing well in Arceus decks lately, that's got regulation mark F, that's legal for tournament play. Whereas if we take a card like, oh, I don't know, Rescue Carrier, that has got a new alternate art printing in Crown Zenith, but it's regulation mark E, it's a reprint, it is rotating out. So, new cards from Crown Zenith stay, but not every card from Crown Zenith stays. It is about the regulation mark, it is not about the set in which it was released. Cool. Uh, new cards must follow the appropriate waiting period to become tournament legal, which is typically two weeks after their release. Moving forward, players should expect cards with the oldest legal regulation mark to rotate out of the standard format when a new one is introduced. That is actually a really, really big sentence that I'm not sure everybody is picking up on enough. They are telling us not just what the rotation is going to be, but when the rotation is going to happen. Because you'll notice that our new set, Temporal Forces... This is the set which is going to change the regulation mark. So the most recent set that has actually been released is Paradox Rift. If we have a look at, for instance, Roaring Moon, that's got a regulation mark of G. The new cards are going to have regulation mark of H. Now, I don't have any English cards to show you. They literally haven't shown... No, I do have some to show you because we have the promos from the Elite Trainer Boxes. That went and got shown off. So we actually do. Let's take Iron Thorns as an example. You'll notice it's got a regulation mark of H. This is the set that changes the regulation mark. So as the set that brings in H comes in. It rotates out E. And we're going to see that next year. Our first set next year in February or March. Scarlet and Violet 9. We have no idea what that is, but it's going to be Scarlet and Violet 9. That is going to bring in Regulation Mark I, and is going to rotate out Regulation Mark F. We know that now. They are telling us the first set of every year, our February or March set, always used to be February, but this is now two years in a row, it's been March. That is going to trigger the rotation. So we've known for a couple of years that one regulation mark is going to rotate out every year. But we are now being explicitly told that the trigger for that is going to be the set becoming legal 
with the new regulation mark. As a side note, remember that Japan sets are legal on the day they're released, whereas ours are legal generally two weeks later. So that is why Japan rotates when the set is released and we rotate a couple weeks later. It's just in terms of legality, that's what's important. And then they give an example of Judge and Rare Candy, but I already did that example with Rescue Carrier, so we don't need to go into any details about that. I've done videos previously covering what we're going to be losing from rotation. I don't intend going into a lot of detail about that. Yes, we know that Battle VIP Pass is rotating. Yes, we know that the entire Mew deck is rotating. But again, I I've done that video. I didn't want to do a video here where I go, hey, the rotation's happening. And I just repeat what I said in my previous video. What's the point? That video is linked in the description. You can just go and watch that video. The point of this video was to tell you what the news was. And the news is twofold. Firstly, confirmation that we are rotating the day the EUIC begins. That is a very big deal. And secondly, actual confirmation that we are going to be rotating in the future on the day that the first set of the year becomes legal, which has been the case now two years in a row. This is the second year we have done exactly that. And that's incidentally how I predicted exactly when the rotation was going to happen. I just looked at what they did last year and went, oh, it looks like they're doing that again. But now we've got actual confirmation that that is definitely happening. This is a very big deal. Right, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you need to know. And now it's over to you guys. Tell me how excited you are to have a look at EUIC of all of these changes. Tell me which cards you're going to miss from rotation. Tell me anything you want to tell me in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at Lawasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. And get shoutouts on the channel like the lovely Uriel Rojas, who's been a supporter of ours for a while now and seems to be a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.